Well, hello again, church family. It's good to be with you once once again on this pastor cast for this week. Um, obviously, a lot of changes, a lot of things have been going on just even over the last weekend. Uh, we had our, our last in-person church service for a little while. As most of you know, if not all of you already, uh, we have moved uh, in the state back to a uh, kind of a shutdown again. Uh, many places being restricted with having uh, indoor uh, services or indoor businesses being able to operate and things of that nature. So uh, a lot of things have changed for us. We've we've taken a couple of steps backwards. I know that's frustrating for us, but that's a situation that we're in right now. Uh, we still are allowed to meet with up to 100 people outside. So if you have a smaller group, a community group, um, something like that, that would like to meet at the church facility, uh, you're still able to do that uh, out in the courtyard would be the probably the best spot to do that. Uh, just contact the church office and we can help make those arrangements for you. Um, right now, though, we are not even allowed to have the 12 inside. Um, there's nothing that has has uh, addressed being able to have anyone inside. So at this point, we're kind of at a zero amount of people meeting indoors. Um, in regards to that, the church office is also uh, going to officially be, be closed again. Uh, there will be people in and out as we need to get things done for the week and preparing for the streaming service again and things of that nature. And we'll be available just as we were before. Uh, so you can call the, the church office number. You can send us emails, anything you like. We'll be in touch. We'll be uh, available by, via communication means. So you can still contact the church office if you have any needs, any requests, Anything that you have in regards to questions about Sundays or anything like that, you can always email me any of the any of the COVID related stuff. I'm here to answer all those questions for you as best as I can as well. So we'll be around. It'll just be a situation where the office is officially closed again for a period of time. Um, one thing to just uh, keep for you to keep in mind is that uh, sometimes we've run into the question of is this just hitting churches? Or is this hitting everybody? I just want to reassure you that as I've read through the, the state order that came out, it's this is not just something that's picking on churches. Um, this is hitting a lot of businesses. A lot of people are being affected by this. Many different aspects of society are, are being hit. So this isn't an unequitable situation like we had talked about when the um, state was suggesting that we discontinue singing. Um, that's not how we're viewing this situation because it, it is pretty much across the board in a lot of ways. Um, some businesses obviously still are not. They're deemed the essential businesses. Um, they'll still be open in some ways. Um, the, the question is always going to be raised, what's the timetable? How long this time? And unfortunately, we don't know. Um, the state order said that as the county health officer, the director of the county health uh, for the state, as they continue to examine the data and look at how this virus is affecting us as a state. Uh, they will make that determination when to start moving back towards opening things up. If past practice has been an indicator for what will be current practice moving forward, what I would assume is that probably within the next two to three weeks, they will have another uh, statement out about when we will be starting to reopen again. So. We'll probably be streaming for at least another month or so. Uh, could be a little longer, um, but what I would encourage you to do is to uh, just try to be as patient as you can until we actually have information. And as before, as soon as we know things, we will let you know and keep you up to speed on what's going on. Um, one thing that uh, I will just prep you again on is when we do return to in-person services, uh, we'll be doing a, a registration system for that. Uh, we won't be polling you again and asking what dates you can be here and then figuring out how to uh, divide people up. Um, what we will be doing is establishing uh, through our church management software a way for you to register for a couple of Sundays a month. Um, as that gets worked out and as we get closer, we'll inform you as to how that's going to work. And um, if you're not real tech savvy and you're not comfortable or not able to sign up online, uh, we'll be able to just take a phone call or an email at the office and help you walk through that process and make sure that you can come to church too. If, if you don't know how to hit links and push buttons and do stuff on your computer, 
uh, we want you to be a church too, and we're not going to leave you out in regards to that. So what do we do in the meantime? Because this is this is potentially a, a discouraging uh, turn as we step backwards. What do we do during this time? And the first thing I would encourage you to do, as we did uh, so many times during the pastor cast in the past, is continue to be prayerful. Don't lose sight of that. If if you truly believe that God is your greatest help and your greatest source of strength and encouragement and comfort and peace and hope and joy, you need to be with him. Spend time in his word. Spend time in prayer. And, and pour yourself out to him. Let him know your frustrations, but then submit yourself to his will and to what he is doing. Remember, he's in control of all of this. He is the sovereign God of the universe. Um, he rules California, not our state officials. He rules. And so we need to just be, be comforted by the fact that God is the one who is ruling and reigning right now over everything. And so we can take great comfort in that. And comfort is found through the truths that we read in his word. Comfort is found in spending time with our Father who loves us and cares for us and wants good for us. So spend time with him. Be doing that. Be effective in your in your study of the word and in your prayer life. Another thing I'd encourage you to do is, as we have in the past as well is be encouraging to one another. Look for opportunities um, that you don't have on a Sunday morning to say hello to someone and, and speak a word of encouragement to them. Look for different ways to do that. We have telephones where you can make phone calls. You can send text messages, emails. Uh, the old-fashioned way that we've talked about before, send a note card, uh, write a letter to somebody. You know, they may get something in the mail and they may not even know what this is and they'll open up and be really surprised and get, uh, get a handwritten note from someone. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can still continue to be encouraging uh, to one another. And don't lose sight of that either. Either it's, it's very easy for us sometimes to be very self-consumed and, and, and get self-focused. Use this time to be looking out for the needs of others, for the concerns of others. Um, somebody may be hurting more than you. Uh, somebody may be uh, needing comfort that you can give, needing a, a bit of joy or a bit of hope that you can provide for them just by the grace of God working through you. So look for those opportunities to encourage one another, to build each other up, to lift each other up. We, we need that all the time. Scripture encourages us to be exhorting, encouraging one another daily, especially as, as the writer of Hebrews says, is that we see the day drawing near. And sometimes it feels like that day's drawing nearer and nearer all the time. So we ought to be about, to be about the business of encouraging one another. So take time to do that as well. Um, also, as you're as you're seeking to to work yourself through this this whole ordeal that we're going through, uh, remember to practice Christ likeness. Remember what Jesus is like, what He displayed for us as an example. Really, in in all areas of our life, we can look to Him as our best example for everything. Um, what was He like? How did He respond to the to the Roman government? How did He respond to difficult situations? and then seek to emulate him, be like he was. Um, we're not doing the same thing that he was doing by going to the cross to pay for the sins of humanity, but we are walking through our own sufferings, our own trials, our own troubles. And God is ordaining all of those things. So as Jesus trusted God to work with him and walk with him through them, we need to do the same. We need to have a Christ-like attitude and, and manner about, about how we live, about how we go about uh, responding to all of these things. It's so easy, isn't it, just to just to, to, to rant to someone or in some way, um, to complain, to, to, to vent. And, and there are times where that may be necessary, but we ought to be careful about how we do that, where we do that, to whom we do that with. Um, one of the best venting people to contact is the Lord Jesus himself and vent to him, as we see so many of the psalmists would sometimes do. Vent there, but then calm yourself there too. Be at peace by the time you're done venting, remembering truths about God, remembering that he loves you, remembering he's in control, remembering that he's with you. We, we can't forget those kinds of things. Jesus didn't, re, didn't forget those things. He practiced them. So we need to practice them also. We need to seek to be like him as best as we can. And I would just encourage you as well, be patient. Um, this is, this is long-suffering. 
this is a very long process that we are going through. We're in, in what, our sixth month now or so of this, March, April, May, June, July, fifth month. Um, we don't know how long this will go on. And, and, and whether this is um, being, being some, uh, it, whether this is something we're experiencing because of only the health reasons, or if there are political reasons that are behind it and using health, whatever's really going on behind the scenes that, that none of us really know about for sure, this is the situation that the Lord has us in. So we need to be patient in it. We need to be patient through it. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't talk about our, our thoughts and our, our feelings about what we're dealing with, but at all times we need to submit those things to the Lord and remember that He is the one who we are to go to with our, our greatest of needs and greatest of problems. And He hears us and He answers our prayers. But sometimes He doesn't answer the prayers in the way that you and I want Him to. Isn't that right? We see that in a lot of ways, don't we? We see that very often. And so if, if we pray and we ask God to end all of this and he doesn't, well, you and I have to be okay with that. We have to understand that he has a different purpose than what we might even see or know about. So that's where we have to trust and be patient. Uh, not with people so much. I mean, we have to do that. But we have to be patient with God and let him do whatever it is that he is doing and trust that what he's doing is, is best for his plan and his purposes to be worked out. Not your plan, not my plan, not our purposes. Because if we were planning everything, if we were running everything, we'd just stop everything, virus would be gone, everyone would be happy. But that's not God's plan, obviously, because that's not what's happening. Remember, Job tells us that God can, his plans cannot be thwarted. So the enemy isn't right now somehow got a stranglehold on God's plans and, and, and making God's plans stop and now he's implementing his plan. That's not happening. God is still in control of this. And that should help us to be patient. Now, I, I know that a lot of you are frustrated with this whole situation. We're frustrated. Um, it, it, I mean, and not just believers, not just the church, people in general are, are tired of how this is going on, how long it's going on, um, being shut down and whatnot. It's frustrating. We understand that. It's, it's discouraging. It, it, it brings a lot of issues to people that wouldn't be there necessarily if this all, all wasn't happening. Uh, but it is. So let me encourage you with some scriptures that I think will be, will be helpful uh, to us as we, as we continue to go through this. This is from 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 starting in verse 11. Now listen listen to what Peter writes. Listen very carefully to the different things. There are some really important nuances that he gives us that I think will be helpful for us. Starting in verse 11, 1 Peter chapter 2, he writes this. Beloved, I beseech you as aliens and exiles. Remember, that's what we are here. This isn't our home. Our home is coming. As aliens and exiles, to abstain from the passions of the flesh that wage war against your soul. Maintain good conduct among the Gentiles so that in case they speak against you as wrongdoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. See, we're to be people that, that exemplify good conduct amongst those who do not know the Lord. And, and it doesn't say when they're doing what you want them to or when they're behaving or when they're being good, we're to maintain good conduct among them, period, all the time, so that they'll speak good of us on the day of visitation, when, when Christ returns, that that will be said, because our conduct was in keeping with Christ's likeness. Peter continues, be subject to the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake, to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Live as free men, yet without using your freedom as a pretext for evil, and I would say for sin. But live as servants of God. Honor all men, 
love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Now, at this point, Peter tells us that we're to be subject to every human institution. God has established them. We know that for Romans 13. Every, every governing authority, every human institution that has authority has been established by God. Romans 13 tells us we're not to resist those authorities because if we do, we're resisting God and we will incur judgment from him. Peter here, he says that, look, they're sent by God. These governors, these authorities, they're sent by God and we are to, for the Lord's sake, for Jesus's sake, submit to them. Not for the sake of the authorities themselves, but for the sake of the Lord. So we have to understand that submission to these authorities, it's not just a matter of obeying the people that give you rules and laws and orders and stuff like that. That's not, that's one aspect of what's happening at a, at an earthly level, at a heavenly level. This is our submission to God and it honors him and it glorifies him when we do this, even if it is to evil governments. Remember, Jesus submitted himself to the government of Rome. They were probably far worse than what we are. In many ways, historically, we, we know that they did horrible things. But he was still submissive to them as an authority placed by God over him. Now, if Jesus has, has the ability to do that, we have the ability to do it with our government. Even if we think they are doing wrong, even if they think that we think that they are, are making mistakes. God doesn't say submit yourself to them as long as they are doing good, as long as they are doing what's right. He doesn't say that. He says, submit yourself to them. The only, the only time that we see that we're, we're not um, supposed to submit ourselves is if they're calling us to sin or to disobey God in some sinful way. And we're not at that point. We're not there. So we ought to be submissive. And God says in verse 15, he says that it's his will by doing right, you should put, the, put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So one of the things that we can be assured about is that when we are obedient to God and for the Lord's sake are being submissive, there's a, there's a way that God uses that in the lives of other people who are, who are not doing that. Peter doesn't explain how, and we don't always know how that works out, but we have to trust God that he will use our obedience to him in the ways that he desires to bring glory to himself. And then this is interesting in verse 16, where he says, live as free men, yet without using your freedom as a pretext for evil. Now, freedom in our country is a big thing, right? It's a big deal. Freedom is, is what our country is founded on, right? The, the opportunity that we have uh, to live as free men. But that freedom doesn't come from our country. It doesn't come from the Constitution. At a legal level, it does. But our freedom comes from Christ, and ultimately Christ only. Because every person is enslaved to sin. As, as Jesus taught, if you, uh, the soul who sins is a slave to sin. And the only thing that sets a person truly free is the gospel that frees that soul from the bondage of sin and frees him to follow Christ and to practice righteousness. So Jesus, uh, Peter here is saying, live as free men. As Jesus has set you free, live as free men. But don't use the freedom that you have that comes from Jesus as a, as, a, as a way for you to then justify doing wrong in some way, sinning in some way, practicing evil in some way. Don't use your freedom for that purpose. Peter here is encouraging us, use our freedom to hear, be submissive to those authorities. It's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? I mean, we feel the weight of that right now. It's, it's hard to say, okay, we'll shut down again. It's difficult. But I think this is a way for us, without even knowing how, this is a way that God will, will bring glory and honor to himself in some way by accomplishing his will and his purpose through all of these things that he is sovereignly ruling and reigning over. Now, wouldn't it be great if he would just send Grace Bible Church a memo about Guys, here's what I'm doing. Don't tell anybody else. Here's what I'm doing. Here's why I need you to do this. That'd be great. Because we'd, we'd have all the inside information and we'd know, oh, we see what's going on. We get it. But we're not going to get that memo. 
what we have is is this that tells us here's how I want you, how I want you to be. This is what I want you to do. Peter goes on. Let me finish here. He says, "Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to the kind and gentle, but also to the overbearing." So there's a call to submission to those who are even overbearing, who are not kind, who are not gentle. There's a call to submission that we we need to trust the Lord in submitting ourselves to. For one is approved, if mindful of God, he endures pain while suffering unjustly. Did you catch that? For one is approved, if mindful of God, if, if you're submitting yourself for the purpose of honoring God, obeying God, if that is what is driving you, God says you are approved, even if you endure pain while suffering unjustly. It may, it may very well be that this this some of this shutdown is unjust. That may be. But if that is the case, let's suffer injustice in a way that honors God, that brings his approval. Did Jesus suffer injustice? Yes, obviously. The greatest injustice ever and he endured it for what was going to happen as a result. We need to do the same thing. Jesus knew what was going to happen as a result of his suffering. We don't know what's going to happen as a result of all of our suffering. But we have to trust God that he knows what he's doing and let him work and let him be glorified through our lives, through our submission. Verse 20, he says, For what credit is it if when you do wrong, you are beaten for it and take it patiently? But if when you do right and suffer for it and take it patiently, you have God's approval. I trust that you want God's approval. I want God's approval. So there are certainly times where we need to suffer and do it and and. and Take whatever's coming to us for doing what's right. And this may be a situation where we're suffering unjustly, but it's more important that we have God's approval than we get our way with man. That doesn't necessarily bring about the righteousness of God or God's plan or purpose being affected, does it? So we have to be very, very humble in submitting ourselves to God and to his plan and his purposes above everything else and not getting ahead of that and being patient and waiting, as Peter says here, taking it patiently. He finishes and says, verse 21, for to, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Remember, suffering is one of the things that God has planned for us. Uh, he has granted us the opportunity to suffer. So we need to view our sufferings as God ordained and something that he uses to help us to grow in Christ likeness. And that we must remember Jesus is our example of this. How did he suffer through injustice? We need to suffer through injustice sometimes exactly the same way. There are times to stand up there are times to, to make some noise, but there are also times to be quiet, just as Jesus was quiet before his accusers. It's hard sometimes to know what the balance is for that. But right now, as we're as a church going through this, we want to encourage you to be shepherded along these lines until we see something from the word and something from the state or the county that would tell us to move in a different direction. This is where I feel, this is where we feel we need to be is in this position of submission and endurance of whatever whatever it is that the Lord is doing through this time. It says about Jesus, he committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. Boy, that's a hard one sometimes, isn't it? Especially all you social media people out there. It's tough sometimes, but that's where Jesus was that's how he responded he did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but he trusted to him who judges justly 
He trusted, even when he was suffering injustice, he trusted God. He trusted God because God is a just judge. And we've talked about this before. God will, God will judge everything that has happened and there will be no injustice unpunished. No injustice will go unpunished, ever. It won't happen. We sometimes can have a hard time trusting God with that because we want to, you know, the scriptures say, vengeance is mine, say it the Lord. And we say, well, I just want to be about my father's business, get a little vengeance. I just want to help him out. Sometimes that's how our view can be. But that's not the right view to have. Peter goes on, he says, he himself, Jesus, he bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. That's a great way to end that chapter, reminding us that we were sheep. We were just walking away. We were straying as sheep do. But Christ called us. He brought us back. He returned us to the shepherd, the guardian of our souls. We have been healed by his wounds. He bore our sins on a cross. That needs to be your motivation for all of this. That needs to be my motivation. Why do we submit? Why do we go through suffering? Why do we not revile when reviled? Why do we practice righteousness? Because of what Jesus did for you and for me. Because he bore our sins on the cross. Because he died to make us right with God. To bring us into the sheepfold. That's why we do this. That's why we endure. That's why we are patient. That's why we wait on God. So I encourage you to do that. Be patient, wait, be prayerful, be in his word, be encouraging one another. Be Christ-like in all of your responses. And if you're struggling, if you're having just a real hard time wrestling with some of these things, contact one of us directly. Go to your community group leaders. Ask them to just help you work through some of these things. And we'll be happy to do that. We love you guys. We care for you. Look forward to seeing you again someday. It's going to happen. Whether it's here, whether it's there, we're all going to be together in Christ's family. So you guys be blessed this week. Um, we'll be streaming Sunday. Nine o'clock is when it will be um, as it was before. And we hope to see all of you then. Take care.